Welcome to Textonation, and we're with Mark Pavlikovsky, the CEO of Piper. Thank you for joining us, Mark. Thank you. Glad to be here. Thank you so much. Give us some background, first of all, of what Piper is all about. Piper, at Piper, we're empowering and inspiring the inventors and creators of tomorrow. So we're inspiring kids to create and invent with technology. And our first product is a computer kit that kids build and program themselves through a game that's similar to Minecraft. And initially, at least, your focus has been in addition to consumers, on the education market. You've been pretty successful there. Tell me about it. Absolutely. Piper is initially conceived as a product to empower today's generation of kids who are so focused on screen time to actually experience hands-on technology. And so part of that is bringing Piper kits into the home, but also bringing it into schools. The way we believe that we get the maximum impact is by providing these for classroom use. So over a 1,000 schools today actually use Piper as part of their curriculum to teach computer science, engineering, and STEM. So this is, this is the kit in a box, as, right. as people would get it. What's so when inside? You, when you open it up, you can see actually the, the gears spin. You can see the, the gears are actually spinning as you're opening the box. And part of this experience is actually to show kids like, hey, there's something magical here. And when you open it up, you realize, oh, it's just, it's just an illusion. This is just a see-through lenticular animation. And that's what Piper's all about, taking the magic of technology and demystifying it. When you open it up, you have a blueprint, a life-sized, full blueprint wow. that you actually use as your instructional as your instruction manual after you've assembled it it's lego style all visual you can actually put it up on your wall and it becomes something you hang in your room inside of inside of the kit we have everything you need to build your first computer you have a screen you have the wooden components the wooden parts the battery pack the actual computer chip itself the raspberry pi um, breadboard speaker mice in fact there's even a screwdriver and for most kids, this is actually the first time they've actually ever used a screwdriver. They don't have to say, Dad, can I have the screwdriver? Look at that. They get their own. Or Mom. That's right. And once you've assembled the kit, this is what it looks like. It comes out just like this. This is the box. When you open it up, it's your first fully working computer kit. Um, you have the battery pack, the, ma the Raspberry Pi, the, the controller board. And I'll reach in here and grab grab battery. So these are fully rechargeable. We're putting in a fresh one in and let's get started. You you play Minecraft, Fred? I have yeah. and I and I've watched others play it too, grandchildren. It's going to take it's going to take 3 seconds to boot up here. So while while we're doing that, I can dive into the So tell uh -huh. us what 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 young people can do with this computer once they've built it. I Absolutely. mean, there's a sense of pride just in that. Absolutely. It takes about, you know, 1 to 2 hours to actually build the computer. And after that, kids feel pretty proud. They, they feel like, wow, I just, I just built my own computer. When they dive in, um, you can see there's a whole experience we've, we've built inside of this Minecraft-like environment. So there's a whole storyline, about 15 hours of content. There's levels and level progression, and there's a whole game. And that game actually teaches you how to build and physically connect more electronics to this computer. So as you're playing it, you're actually building the computer. You're building your own control panel, you're building lights, switches, sensors, and you're also programming them. So, if, so I see the mouse here. Is there also a keyboard that goes with this? So you actually build a part of your own keyboard. And I'll show you how it's done here in, in the first level. Um, be outside the Piper experience, as you're going through that, outside of it, there's actually a fully working computer as well, and I can show you that a bit later. There is... Um, is it internet connected? You can connect to the internet, exactly. Um, and you can see here, this is the first level of, of the game that we designed. There's actually a cutscene and a storyline, and we have a storyline actually to appeal to girls. What we noticed is that boys were really interested in connecting electronics, programming, but girls needed some kind of narrative, some kind of storyline, some characters to really get excited and to understand the reason why they're actually programming things. So there's a, a storyline that involves a calamity about to happen on Earth, an asteroid's gonna hit Earth, and you have to activate this robot on Mars to save Earth. There he is right there, you're calling him. You can actually see the characters right there etched into the box. The robot's asleep, you have to activate him, wake him up, and whenever you start playing the game, you're actually playing as the robot. And the, very, the only thing, as you pointed out, you have to begin with is just a mouse. Now that first video explained how to use a mouse, because most I mean, kids... For, for just using a Raspberry Pi here, the responsiveness seems terrific. Oh yeah, yeah, we're getting, I think, 60 plus, FPS frames per second. Um, it's yeah, it's a fully you know, you know, responsive um, Minecraft in there, and 
the first experience actually teaches kids how to use a mouse. Most kids are so used to the touch screen that we have to actually explain, here's how you move around, here's how you left click, here's how you right click. And what you're doing in the beginning is you're actually building up this wire. You're allowing current to flow through a complete wire. And you're learning about current, electricity, that you need a complete wire to get current to flow through. And so you do that, you learn how to use a mouse, you fix the telescope, the robot goes over to the telescope. And at this point, kids are asking, how do I actually move? How do I actually play the game, right? And this, this is the part where, where we actually show them. And you're going you're gonna to see it in this, in this part of the video. You realize it's actually a cheese steroid heading towards, not an asteroid, a cheese steroid. The mouse is pretty happy about that one. And the robot says, you know, I can't move. And you have a little speaker here. We can't hear it right now, but if you turn on the speaker, you can. And the mouse is like, let me repair you. She jumps inside of the robot. And you can see inside of him is actually this Raspberry Pi. The chip that you have in front of you is actually in, in the game. That's inside the robot. And you're going to build something here. And to make it really explicit, we pull it through this digitizer. And it becomes the real thing. And so you can see that's what you have in front of you. And for, I'm going to I'm gonna hold the microphone while you actually build something here. So you have to take two red wires from this box. I got it right here. You take two red wires from here. And you're going to attach, as you see in the video, you're going to attach them. I can hold this as well. You're going to attach them to the, to the fifth and sixth pins on the front row right there on the Raspberry Pi. One, two, three, four, five. And there, there it is. Goes this way? Yep, that looks like the right one. Okay. And then you got, you got another one here. Is there... Right way and a wrong well, way let's, let's try it out. Let's, okay. let's touch the wires together. So it's saying let's touch the wires together. And tap them, tap them together. And tap them together, and he moves. And whenever you touch him, the character moves in the game. So when you complete the circuit, something happens on the screen. And this is the first time that kids actually realize, wow, there's this whole interplay, this hybrid of a physical and digital space. That's really awesome. Now, how far can kids take the Piper computer. What, so, what, what else can they do with it? So they actually build a whole series of hardware gadgets. There's a whole box. And you build, you, first you build the controller, you plug those wires into the button, you build other sensors, you build switches and lights and buzzers and LED lights. And all these things, you're building them to solve problems in the game. So by the end of the experience, by the end of the 15 hours, you actually have a whole dashboard of hardware, of gadgets that you build that actually give you power-ups in the game that you didn't even realize could could be a thing. Lots of kids, when they play Minecraft, they're looking for diamonds, or they're, they're digging really hard. And we and here in Piper, you can actually just build a light. And the closer you get to diamonds, the more frequently the light blinks. And there are more USB ports, and even it looks like an Ethernet port on, on the Raspberry Pi as well? That's exactly right. So outside of the Piper experience, as I was telling you, you know, in, in the experience, you have the gameplay, you have 3D printing. You can make things inside the game and actually 3D print it. If you have a 3D printer, you can create music and export it. You can create videos and screenshots of your gameplay and share it. But outside of all of that, there's actually a whole desktop environment. So you can actually use Piper as a regular computer. So if you have a keyboard, you can USB, you can USB in, open up. There's Office. I can show you right now. There's um, open source Office. And you can print with this and everything? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You have the full capabilities of a regular computer. I'm just going to exit to the desktop here, scroll up, and um, oh, you can see here Piper Universe. This is, you know, this is an example of some of the things I've built. Um, you know, there's, there's a Raspberry Pi. What, what about storage in terms there's, of uh, storing files, et cetera? Absolutely. There's, um, there's, it comes with 16 gigabytes of storage on an SD card. And now, this is, this is the environment outside of Piper. Um, as you can see, there's other programming languages. There's a full suite of open Word, open PowerPoint, open Excel. If, you, if your kid wants to pretend like they're their dad and they want to make a PowerPoint presentation, they can do that. Now, there's, is, other, is it Wi-Fi connected or only Ethernet? It, there's Wi-Fi connectivity on there. So we actually update the Piper content on a regular basis. So we ask kids to connect to Wi-Fi, and they get updates, new levels, new content, pretty much every single quarter. Well, tell me the story behind this. You're a young guy. No secret there. How'd you come up with this, and why? Yeah, that's a great question. So I was actually, I was born in Ukraine. Growing up, I got a ton of opportunities here in America, uh, whether it was going to great universities or having great mentors, and I wanted to give back in some way. I went, to, I went to Africa thinking I would actually teach kids about global health using games, design a curriculum, was teaching kids, it was great, but I got sick myself and almost died, had to be evacuated. And I thought, wow, that was, that was a close call. If I'm going to make an impact, I probably should do it in a more scalable way. 
I should do using technology. So I started learning about programming electronics and found the Raspberry Pi and thought, wow, if I had this growing up, I would have been building stuff at a much earlier age. I would, I would have been playing with this instead of Legos. And so I wanted to build that. And so building, iterating, testing with kids, that was how we came to, to what Piper is today. And that was three years ago. And since then, we've launched, you know, we've... You were about 23 or so at the time, is that right? That's right, I was 23 at the time. Um, at that time, we, uh, we launched a Kickstarter three years ago. Steve Wozniak actually endorsed it, which was awesome. And what he loved about it was that we're teaching kids in a way that's not didactic, that doesn't force it. They already play Minecraft, and we're just giving them a different, better way to play. And that's what Steve loved, because that's how he learned programming. He was also hacking games. So where do you want to go with this? What's next? So our vision is to create a whole ecosystem of products. Same way that Lego is an ecosystem of products, of robots, drones, home alarm systems, things that anything you want to use, you build yourself as a kid. You can program it. You can change how it works. It's not a black box. It's not something that someone gives you, like, like a watch or this microphone or the camera. It's actually something you create and make it your own, and you understand how it works. And we feel like that's, that's what's missing today in society. We feel like kids today, there's a lot of passive screen time, a lot of consumption. And we want to empower and inspire the next generation of creators. Instead of vegging out in front of a video game on a screen or a tablet, et cetera. So tell us where people can get this, pricing, et cetera. You can get it on our website, buildpiper.com. You can also get it on Amazon. And you can get it in stores in Barnes and Noble and on, on ToysRUs.com as well. So the website again is buildpiper.com. Mark Pavlikovsky, thanks for taking the time with thanks us. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, Fred.